Welcome guys to a math ninja video. Um, basically, when I do math in my head or I come up with the little tricks that math teachers use all the time, students think I'm some kind of a math ninja. It makes me giggle um, because uh, the reason why I look so impressive is not because I'm so much smarter than the average person. I'm really not. It's because I know tricks you don't know. So this is me letting you in on my tricks. So let's talk about um, some tricks for the nine times tables. I cannot tell you how many of my students uh, start class and they do not know their nine times tables. And frankly, they're intimidated by the nine times tables. They think they're petrifying and they think they'll never learn them. So um, let's see if we can make those a little easier. So the first statement I'd like to make, I think we can all agree with. Can you agree with this statement? Can we accept this? That the number nine is one less than 10. I don't think that there's anybody here who's gonna argue with this statement, um, not unless they wanna look foolish. We know that nine is one less than 10. It's the number right before 10. Um, now, nine might seem like a painful number to deal with, but 10 is our friend. 10 is easy to add with, subtract with, multiply with, divide with. And so what we can do is we can make nine a little bit easier by using his neighbor, 10. Let me show you what I mean. So first, let's look at addition. And you're going, Kate, isn't this a video about the times tables? Indeed, it is a video about the times tables, but remember that multiplication is just repeated addition, so don't worry, I'm getting there. Let's talk about adding. Now, traditionally, when you go to add nine, what we usually do, uh, what most of us have been taught, and there's nothing wrong with this method, okay? I'm just gonna show you a trick that's faster. Um, but we start adding on this right here, and we add nine plus five, and um, many of us have it memorized, but for those of us who don't, we'll just count up. So it'll be like nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and we'll drop our ones column, carry, and then I can see uh, two plus one, I'm sorry, I said ones column and I meant tens, guys, sorry. We moved our tens over here into the tens place. But anyway, and now we're gonna add these two numbers in the tens place. Uh, two and one makes three tens or 30. And so I end up with 34. That's the traditional way that you were taught in elementary school. Again, there's nothing wrong with that way, okay? Uh, but I wanna talk about how easy it is to add 10. Where nine, I had to do that kind of carrying and, um, it was a two-step process. If I wanted to add 10, it'd be super simple because all that's going to happen, as you guys know, nothing is going to happen in my ones column. My ones column won't change because a 10 has no ones. And the only thing that's going to happen is I'm going to go up in my tens column. So uh, really simple, no, no change in my ones column from 25 to 35. And all that happens is I go up in my tens column. In fact, a lot of students, because of that, don't need to do add um, 10 on paper. They just do it in their head. They go, oh, 57 plus 10. I'll just go up in my tens column to 67. Or 83 plus 10. I'll just go up in my tens column, 93. So clearly it's very, very simple to add 10. So how is this gonna help me add nines? That's the real question. Well, we just said that nine is one less than 10, right? And so my recommendation to you, let's look back at that 25 plus nine column. Rather than trying to carry and counting up and all that, can we just go up by 10 and down by one? Up by 10, I went 10 more because um, nine is close to 10, but then I had to go down by one in the ones column uh, because nine is one away from 10. Okay, let's try this a few times to see if we can't get what I'm getting at here. So if I wanted to do like say 45 uh, and I wanted to add nine to that, I would go up by 10 and down by one. Let's try another one. I wanted to add um, 
9 here. So again, I'm going to go up by 10, so there's my tens column, and down by 1. 9 is 1 less than 10, and so you can go up by 10 and down by 1. Okay, so let's now apply this to the 9 tens tables. And you'll see that they're the most beautiful pattern table of all. Okay, so of course 9 times 1 is 9. Now, as you should know, multiplication is just repeated addition. If you forget your times tables, you can just add 9 repeatedly. And so that's what I'm going to do using this trick to build my entire times tables. If I want to do 9 times 2, I'm going to go up by 10. Now this number has 0 in its tens column, so up by 10 will take me to 110, and down by 1. Up, down. 9 times 3, same thing. I'm going to go up, so 1, next number is 2, and I'm going to go down. 8, 7. And we can see that this pattern is going to continue up by 10 from 2 to 3, down by 1. Can you see it? Can you see it? 0, 1, 2, 3. The next one's going to be 4. And on this side, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Next one will be 54. Can you see it? What would the next number be? If you went up in the tens column from 50, you'd go to 60. And down in the ones column, you're going to go down from 4 to 3, exactly. Next one will be up to 7, down to 2. And I did not leave myself enough space, but if I went up from 70, it'd be 80. And down from 2, it'd be 1. Up from 80 would be 90. And down from 1 would be 0. Now, some students tell me my trick broke right here, but it's not breaking, guys. If I went up from 90, I'd be at 100. 100 and 1 less than 100 is 99. So it really does lead to 99 even applying my trick. However, probably the easier way if I just have a 0 here and I want to add 9 is just to directly add 9. 99. And I'm going to keep using my trick because I want you to see that you can actually have your 9 times tables memorized higher than any other tables because of this. Because up from 10, if I go up 10 in this column, so I'm at 90, it's going to go up to 100 and then down 8. So then this is going to go up from 10 to 11, and this will go down to 7. This will go up to 12, down to 6, up to 13, down to 5, up to 14, down to 4. And you can actually do this indefinitely. You could count by 9 um, forever because it's so simple. Okay, so super nice trick. So that's my first trick, okay, um, that adding 9 is super easy. You're just going to go up in the tens column, uh, down in the ones column. Really easy to construct your nine times tables. Okay, my first trick. Now here's my second trick. I want to point out to you something else, so let's move on. I want to show you something about what's called the sum of digits on the nine times tables. Another way, like maybe you're forgetting a nine times fact, or it's right on the tip of your tongue, or you can remember one of the numbers but not the other. This happens to us. Um, so let me show you one more beautiful pattern to the nine times tables. So I'm gonna list them out again. So nine, up by one, down by one, or up by 10, I should say, down by one. Up by 10, down by one, up by 10, down by one, up by 10, down by one. Let me just reconstruct this list so I can show you a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. Up by 10, down by 1, up by 10, down by 1. Okay. Oh, I just messed it up. Did I just mess it up? No, I didn't. It's fine. I don't know why 117 just threw me, but it is, it is correct. Okay, so here I have my 9 times tables going on for um, a while, actually, up to 9 times 13. Uh, but um, what I want to show you is what's known as the sum of digits pattern. You can also use this pattern to come up with your times tables. So what does sum mean? Well, a lot of you guys know sum means the answer when you add. And that is a word you have to know for the GED, by the way, because um, they use it in word problems. So sum means the answer when you add. And digits are the individual sum symbols within a number. You know, like we only have 10 digits in, in our number system, the digits 0 through 9, and we use those to assemble all the other bigger numbers. Okay, 
and smaller numbers actually. <laughs> so those are our digits, our individual symbols. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sum the digits. I'm going to add the individual symbols within these numbers. So with nine, there's only one symbol, there's only one digit, so it's just nine. But starting at 18, let's add these. We're gonna add one plus eight. Guys, what is one plus eight? Oh, well, it's nine, notice that? Well, how about this next one? Two plus, whoa, two plus seven. What would I get if I sum these digits? Well, I'd still get nine. Same thing if I added three and six, I'd get nine. Four plus five gives me nine. Five plus four also gives me nine. Six plus three also gives me nine. Seven plus two also gives me nine. Eight plus one gives me nine. And by now students are going, oh, Kate, it always adds to nine. Watch out, that's not exactly the pattern. You kind of got it if you think that, but not exactly, because take a look at this one. Nine plus nine is clearly not nine. What is nine plus nine? Well, it's 18. Two things I want to point out about this number though. One, this number 18 is on the nine times tables. It's not nine, but it's um, still on the nine times tables. But the second thing is, it's not a one digit number yet. Can you see that? It's still two digits. So what if I were to keep adding? Oh, well, if I were to keep adding, one plus eight would give me nine, okay? One plus zero plus eight gives me, of course, nine. One plus one plus seven gives me nine. Can you see this sum of digits pattern? That basically, um, Anything on the nine times tables, if you add the individual digits, it's going to give you nine or a multiple of nine, and eventually it will add to nine if you just keep adding till you have one digit. So we can totally use this trick to get our um, nine times tables memorized up to nine times 10. Super, super easy. This is what you're going to do. Okay. If I want to come up with a nine times fact, like nine times three, Okay. Now, again, I'll point out that 9 is really close to 10, and we all know what 10 times 3 is. 10 times 3 would be 30, right? Nobody struggles with their 10 times tables. Well, since I'm not doing 10 times 3, I'm doing 9 times 3, I'm going to be less than 30. So we're going to start with 20. And you're like, well, 20 what, Kate? Well, you need to add up to 9. So 2 plus what equals 9? Oh, 7. Let's try another one. What if I wanted to do like 9 times 5? Okay, again, what would 10 times 5 be? 10 times 5 would be 50, 5 tens. But I have less than that. I don't have um, tens, I have nines. And so I'm going to go down. It won't be a 5, it'll be a 4. So this first number, the number in the um, tens place, is going to be 1 down here. We're going to be 1 less. And then I need to add up to 9. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, it would make 5 to add up to 9, 45. Well, what about this hard one, nine times eight, everybody struggles with eight. Same thing, it won't be 80, it's gonna be uh, le less than that. It's gonna be 70, 70 what? We'll add up to nine, one, two. Well, what if I wanted to do nine times six? Again, go one less than that number, five, and add up to nine, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is a really nice trick to memorize your nine times tables through uh, uh, nine times 10. After that, um, that going one down is not going to keep working, but still, it's a great trick. So let's have you try nine times seven. What would the first number be, the number in the tens place? Well, you know it's not going to be 70, but it's going to be real close. Yeah, exactly, six. We're going to go down from seven to six. And then what do I need to do? Add up to 10. So 6, 7, 8, 9. I need a 3 here so that these two numbers, 6 plus 3, add up to 9. Great. I hope these tricks help you. They're not even the only ones, but I think that's enough for one video. Um, so uh, get your 9 times tables down because all math ninjas know them. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments.